In this video, we're going to discuss some of the background uh, behind uh, component aliases and placeholders that you can use in JavaScript code. So you can see here we have a simple uh, grid component and we have a button on the grid. And if we go back to the builder and look at the uh, code for this button, uh, we can see that we've written some JavaScript and inside the JavaScript we've used um, some placeholders. So you can see that we've got over here grid.component name and if I click on the insert placeholder button over there you'll see the list of the various placeholders uh, is uh, displayed. So these are the placeholders for a grid component. There would be different placeholders if you were in a uh, UX or dialog component. So um, you can see that we're in the um, event here we've used uh, grid.component name as a placeholder for the for this component's alias and we've also used grid.row number as a placeholder for the current row in the grid. So let's go ahead now and save this and then run it. So I'm going to go into working preview. Now in working preview we automatically assign an alias of grid1 to a grid component. So when I click this button right now we can see that what well, we're actually the placeholders have been replaced so grid.component name was replaced with grid1 because that's the alias that we use uh, in working preview and then it says on row 1. If I click for example on this button over here you can see it says grid1 on 10. So what we've shown here is how the aliases uh, got replaced um, at runtime by their real values. So now let's go and look at a slightly different variant of this where we instead of uh, assigning uh, the component alias by default as we do for working preview we explicitly set the alias so I'm going to go now to a blank A5W page I'll just type in say my page and I'll save the page and then I'm going to go here and insert component and I'm going to choose the customer grid and you can see that when I insert the customer grid uh, alpha prompts for the alias that I'd like to use for this component and it uh, gives a default alias um, that is constructed from the name of the uh, component so I'm going to go here and call this uh, my grid one and then go ahead now and um, save and you can see that my component got added and now if I uh, run this in live preview, let's go ahead now and uh, run this component in live preview and now press this button, you can see what it says now is my grid 1 on row 2 and then of course over there would be my grid 1. So when I was in working preview whenever I pressed the button it said grid 1 and now it's saying my grid 1. So let's go take a look at why it's doing that. So we'll go back to design mode and now we'll take our A5W page here and switch to source mode so we can see some of the code behind the scenes. So if we look here we can see that in the code that got generated the um, component name over here was sh um, is set to this variable called component alias and there is component alias. So if I go here and change the component alias now from my grid one to um, cast grid underbar A and then uh, save this and then go ahead now and uh, run this in live preview and then click on the button we can see that it's now saying cast grid A. So what we've shown at this point now is how you can control the alias when you create an A5W page and how uh, the curly bracket grid dot component name placeholder gets replaced by the alias. So let's pause now and pick this up in the next video where we'll uh, explain what the significance of the alias is and what some of the other placeholders uh, are that you can use in your JavaScript. So we're continuing now with our discussion about aliases and uh, placeholders and what we've shown is that uh, when we're in working preview the uh, grid.component name um, placeholder 
is replaced with the alias that is used for all grids in working preview which is grid under bar 1. So let's go now and actually run this uh, in a browser and take a look at another significant use um, of the uh, component alias. So I'm going to go now and run this component uh, in, um, in Firefox again uh, using live preview now. So when you use live preview just like working preview we automatically assign an alias of uh, grid1. So you can see there you can see it says grid1. But now let's go and inspect one of these fields. So when I inspect the field and I look at this um, element uh, in the DOM we can see that the alias has been used here as part of the um, element ID. So you can see there, for example, uh, it says grid1, which was the alias, dot v, which is the namespace that everything is um, placed into, dot r1, which indicates this is row 1, and then company name. So if I were to uh, point now to, say, for example, this element over there, we can see that it's um, grid1.v.r8.company name. So the alias is being used uh, in the um, element ID. So if I were to go back now to my um, HTML page uh, where we sp specified a different alias for the component and run this now and then let's right click and inspect this element we can see now that the elements are no longer named grid1 uh, etc but they are now named um, uh, cust grid under bar a dot v dot r8 so the alias that is defined is used as part of the element name so why is that that we're doing that so the reason that we use the alias as part of the element name is uh, an HTML page uh, needs to ensure that every single ID is unique. So if I were to go back now to this page which contains one instance of the customer grid and go here for example now and say uh, grid 2 and then I'm going to go onto this page now and insert the exact same component so now I'm going to go there and choose customer grid there and this time I'm going to go here and type in grid 2 as the alias. So the alias has to be unique. So now what I've got is, um, oh actually that didn't, let's just go here and uh, move this off to grid 2. So now what I've got is an A5W page that has two instances of the same grid. However, each instance has its own unique alias. So if I go here and run this page now, you can see that we've got our two independent in instances. I can go navigate next on this instance without affecting this instance over here. And if I were to go and, for example, look at the ID of um, this uh, company name field in the first grid, I can see that this one is using grid under bar 2 but if I go to this grid over here and right click I can see that this one is using customer grid under bar A so you can see that uh, the um, the alias is used as part of the uh, element ID in the component and this um, ensures that all of the elements uh, on the um, page on the HTML page or in the DOM have unique values so let's pause now and pick this up in the uh, next video. So we're continuing our discussion now about component aliases and placeholders and let's uh, next now go and run this in the browser. Uh, we'll use uh, Firefox and then uh, let's use the Firebug um, inspector to inspect the action on this um, next button over here. So I'm going to go there and then click on next and then what I can see is that when the user clicks on the next button there's the on click event here that says grid under bar 1 under bar grid object dot page navigate so what this is telling me here is that we're calling the page navigate method with the parameter of next of this grid object and the grid object itself is called grid under bar 1 under bar grid obj so as you recall since we're working now in live preview the alias was automatically set to grid under bar 1 so that's the alias 
which is the same as grid dot component name and then underbar grid obj so let's go now and see how we can create our own button that does a page navigate next so we'll go back now to design mode and then let's um, put our own button just put another button in the grid over there so we'll go there and then just give it a label of next and uh, we'll switch over to uh, JavaScript here so we can just start typing in JavaScript. So as you recall, we saw in the uh, browser when we inspected the element that the method was uh, a method of grid1 underbar grid obj. So uh, there's a placeholder for that. So let's go now to insert placeholder. And we can see that uh, while we've previously used grid underbar component name, this time we're going to use grid underbar object. So this is the actual object itself. And this uh, will resolve uh, at runtime to the alias with and then underbar uh, grid obj. So let's go there and insert that. And then go dot uh, page navigate. And then I'll just type in say next. So now this is my own JavaScript that I've just written now to navigate to the next page in the grid. So let's go ahead now and then save this, go to working preview, and then you can see that when I click this button, we're navigating to the next record. If we go now into um, the browser and then inspect that button, that next button over there, we can see that it automatically now has grid 1 underbar grid obj dot page navigate so even though when we defined the button we typed curly bracket grid dot object at runtime grid dot object got resolved into this name over there which is the actual object itself now um, advanced users can go to firebug to the dom and if you look in the dom you'll actually see there's a, a javascript object over here in the dom called grid one underbar grid obj so this is the actual grid object and if I expand that I'll get to see all of the methods and properties of this grid object so now if we go back to our HTML uh, page over here where we um, where we uh, specified a, uh, a different object name so let's go back to say page one over here where we've got uh, two instances of the grid each with a different alias and uh, run this now we can see that if I click this button it navigates uh, in this grid and if I click this button it obviously navigates in this grid but if I were to right click and say inspect element I can see that the uh, on click event that we have uh, over here is using uh, grid um, underbar 2 whereas if I right click on this um, element and then inspect it I can see that this element is using uh, cust grid 1 underbar a underbar grid obj so what we've shown over here is that the, the uh, placeholder let's go back to the grid itself that the uh, the placeholder um, grid dot object is replaced at runtime with the real name of the grid object so let's pause now and pick this up in the next video so we're continuing our discussion now on aliases um, and placeholders and at this point we've been demoing uh, all of these uh, concepts inside the grid component but the comments all apply equally well to the UX component so let's uh, switch now to uh, the UX component and uh, discuss uh, placeholders and aliases in the context of the UX component so I'm going to go back to the web control panel now and let's go ahead now and create a new UX component and I'll just create a blank component and I'll just put a few uh, simple controls here say first name last name and uh, city and then I'll go ahead now and uh, let's go and uh, put in a uh, button that'll submit the components so I'll go there and hit the uh, uh, submit reset button so now if I go and look at the um, code that got uh, placed in the on click event of that button I can see that the code is automatically using a placeholder called dialog.object so if I go and click on insert placeholders I can see that we get a very similar list of placeholders uh, to the grid 
accepting that this time they're used, they have a dialog uh, prefix, not grid prefix, but here is uh, dialog.object, which was analogous to grid.object. That gives me a pointer to the actual object itself. Dialog.component name is the alias um, of the component. And then here are some, uh, some other um, uh, placeholders that are useful when you write your own um, uh, JavaScript and the meaning and the use of each of these placeholders is described uh, in the description list over here. But by far, by far the most common aliases that you're going to use are dialog.object and dialog.component uh, name. So again, let's, uh, let's go ahead now and then uh, click OK and then save it and uh, I'll go ahead now and I'll call this uh, say UX1 and then uh, let's also go and put a button we'll put our own button so we'll go to um, other controls and then button and we'll just alert um, as we did in the case of the grid so we'll go there and type in alert and then we'll insert our placeholder dialog.component name and then uh, hit the save button and then switch over now to working preview and when I click this button I can see that it shows DLG1 so uh, what this is showing is that when we do a working preview or a live preview the alias that is assigned to a UX component is automatically DLG1 uh, as we showed previously in the case of a grid the automatically assigned alias was uh, um, grid1 but of course if we create our own A5W page so let's go here and say save page and I'll just call this say uh, page UX hit the save button and then if we look here in uh, the code here we can see that the alias over here was UX1 but I'm going to go here and change that to my UX COMP and then save this and now go ahead and uh, run it so now when I press the button you can see that there's the alias my UX COMP and that alias is going to be used in the element uh, ID so we'll go there and inspect the element and we can see there's the, um, the, the ID of, of that element is my UX comp which is the alias that we assigned and then dot V dot R1 Dot city. So what we can see here is that the naming convention used for uh, elements in the UX component is actually very similar to the naming convention used in the grid component. We still use uh, .v, .r. So there's the alias, then .v, .r, and then a row number, and uh, .city. The only, the only difference is that in the case of a grid, there actually are multiple rows. There's row 1, row 2, row 3, etc. In the case of the UX component, all of the uh, um, elements are in row 1, so that, uh, all elements are going to have dot .r1 in the case of the uh, uh, UX component. So let's go back to the uh, builder now and continue the discussion of uh, aliases and placeholders. But we'll pause now and pick this up in the next video. So we're continuing our discussion now on aliases and placeholders that you can use uh, in your JavaScript code. Uh, in the UX component and uh, let's go now and discuss some of the other placeholders that you can use in your JavaScript code. So at this point our UX component is extremely simple but let's go now and uh, insert an embedded grid component. So we'll go there and we'll insert the customer grid now as a child of this UX component. So you can see now when we go to working preview here's our UX and then embedded in the UX is our uh, grid component. So now let's say that we'd like to put a button on the UX that is going to uh, navigate to the next record in the grid component. So this button that we're going to place in the uh, grid component will be talking to another object. So let's go now and um, add another button. So we'll go there and say um, um, on the uh, button text we'll just go and give it a, a label to identify it so we'll go here and we'll say um, navigate to next grid record and then let's go to the event handler so we'll go here to the click event we'll switch to text mode and now let's go insert placeholder 
and you can see that um, the placeholders that we've discussed and, and uh, demonstrated so far are just uh, dialog.object and dialog.component name but here's a placeholder for dialog.embedded grid so let's go ahead now and uh, click that and then uh, insert and uh, now um, we're going to need to replace this with the real ID of the uh, uh, grid component that we uh, embedded but uh, since we don't know that yet uh, let's just uh, leave this blank temporarily and then go back to this grid and we can see here that when you embed the grid there's um, uh, the alias is automatically assigned to default alias uh, but that doesn't do us any good because we need to know what the alias is going to be so we're going to go now and change that to an explicit alias so we'll go there and type in say G1 so now what we've done is we've indicated that when this embedded grid object is run we want to s explicitly set the alias of that component to G1 in much the same way as we did in a previous video when we went to the HTML to the .a5w page and we explicitly set the alias to use for the component so now we know that this embedded grid is going to use an alias of G1 let's go back to our button over here and now we can replace um, grid alias over there with uh, G1 so now this placeholder is going to give us a placeholder is going to give us a pointer to the embedded grid and now we can go here and say um, navigate page next or I believe it might be page navigate um, well let's just try navigate page and go ahead now and uh, click this button now it is um, let's say that there was an error so let's go and fix our JavaScript here and make that um, page navigate go ahead there click the button so now when I press this button you can see that we're talking so this button over here is talking to this grid and uh, it the the way in which it got a pointer to this child embedded grid was through the placeholder um, dialog dot embedded grid so the placeholders um, uh, are, are very useful in both the grid and the um, and the UX component and uh, the placeholders always get replaced at runtime with um, real values uh, based on the alias uh, of the component that you're running so I hope these videos have been useful thanks very much for watching